Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today is a really, really exciting video. As you know, before watching this review and guide, I happen to be a massive Logitech fan. I have five different G Pro wireless mice. I think I'm probably showing them on screen, so keep that in mind. I have been very critical of the mouse before, and I'm gonna cover that in today's video and review. It just happens to be a great size for my hand. After going through dozens and dozens of mice, I've gone through many on this channel, and I just so happen to really like the shape of the G Pro. But there's things that I wanna talk about that corrects that are my personal preference with these mice, and I'm excited to really share and break down it with you. Remember, mice is preference, and what feels comfortable really depends on your hand shape, grip style, mouse pad, and other factors. Also, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content on the channel. So let's get into it. So today we're gonna discuss the G Pro X Super Lite. I can honestly say that this really, again, takes away everything I disliked about the G Pro and provided the feedback into this mouse. So what we're gonna cover is what's in the box, what I disliked about the G Pro, then what they adjusted in the super light version of it, features, and then I'm gonna cover the glide and performance on 10 plus mouse pads and a detailed analysis and just kind of descriptions and discussion, just to kind of really help you get a feel because I know a lot of you guys out there have a lot of different mice. And remember, even though a mice will give a certain amount of performance, it's gonna vary depending on the pad that you're using. So I'm gonna to try to make that as a different edge on this video compared to a lot of other reviews. And I hope that really helps somebody out there. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about what's in the box. Obviously the box is clean, resembles what a standard G Pro wireless would be. It comes with a cable. Just note that this one is not braided. I know some of the other ones, I think the standard G Pro came with a braided cable and this one doesn't come with a braided cable. The wireless dongle is pretty standard. It actually says Pro X on there, just so you can kind of tell the difference between your Pro X one and of course you happen to have a regular G Pro, then it, I think it says uh, Pro on there. Yeah, it does. Now also there is the grip tape that came with this, which I need to experiment more on. I've used grip tape on my G Pro before. I forget which brand I utilized. This one seems pretty thin. Um, it's, it looks like it applies, everything looks great, fits. Obviously, I'll post later comments on this. I didn't get time to really break that down, uh, but it's a nice solution. I mean, the issue when you're touching this specific, you know, the G Pro is that you tend to sweat based on the texture and the feel. So this is a good alternative if you want to get a little more performance and grip out of it. Now, there's a different PTFE at the bottom of the mouse. They come with uh, PTFE mice feet, which is for the improved glide, which we're going to talk about. Also at the bottom of the mouse, where you remove the power play thing, there's a version that you can apply to it that has PTFE on it, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. And there's one without it, and then sometimes I've honestly just removed the bottom part to lower the weight of the mouse. And we'll talk about that as well. They also remove the button at the bottom of the mouse that changes the DPI, which is also kind of interesting. Uh, but let's talk about the bottom of the mouse. And again, when I remove that little thing at the bottom, I used to do that on all my G Pro to kind of just make it feel lighter. But now the Teflon bottom actually is really, really nice. I will talk about that in the glide. This also came with standard stickers, you know, G Logitech little sticker there, papers, and that's really pretty much in the box. Now let's highlight what I really disliked about the G Pro Wireless, because this is going to shape the narrative of what the super light is. I, you know, I've, I've done this in many videos and I've claimed it many times. I, I really, really, really disliked the mice feet on the standard G Pro. I always felt they felt too rugged and they were like sandpaper. It is why I have videos on my channel, you can literally look where I've replaced the mice feet. I replaced them on every single G Pro because I disliked the mice feet that much. But I mean here, they definitely provide a solution. They're using PTFE and it feels really nice and it gives you that glide that, for me personally, that I've always been seeking without having to purchase aftermarket mice feet. They adjusted the shape at the bottom of this as well, which is also some of my feedback. I've also been a bigger fan of the Zowie mice feet because they cover more of the overall shape of the mouse rather than just putting them on the various edges. They did this on the G305 and the G Pro. It just kind of adds, I mean, it just kind of feels like it rolls a bit more, which is not a bad thing. So that's a personal preference. So as you're looking at this review and you ask yourself, would you like the shape? Think of if you're a Zowie mice user and looking at that overall shape, if you would prefer it. I actually, on my Ultralight 2 Final Mouse, I actually replaced the mice feet with Zowie mice feet, so I'll probably showcase it on screen. Now for the exciting part is that I always wish that the G Pro was lighter. In this version of the mouse, they really shaved off about 
20 grams, giving this an improved feel where you really focus on the bottom of the mouse, which I really love rather than the weight of the top of the mouse. Especially, I, I utilized the G305 for a while just to give myself a, a reminder of how much a heavier mouse would feel. Like the G502 is an extremely, extremely heavy mouse, just as an example. And one that is Logitech, but I personally wouldn't use just due to the sheer weight. But again, for those that are looking in terms of white light mice, then I guess this would may not be a preference if you really dislike light mice. So it's just a really personal preference thing. But if you're looking performance and speed, I'm gonna go lighter. With the regular G Pro, I either use the G640 for that slower but yet speed glide, the Artisan Hind for a faster texture glide, and the FX0 extra soft for an in-between point for speed. Now, with the old super light, they also removed the RGB lighting on the super light mouse and it helps improve the battery life, which is great. This is where they, they, they just remove things just to get the weight down. Obviously you have to cut things to get the weight down and they discarded the RGB lighting. For me, that's not really a loss. I don't necessarily need to look pretty while you're aiming. This improves the battery life from even as a benefit from 40 hours to I believe around 70. Of course, mileage varies greatly as you turn it on and off for usage. Another downside is they shave off the weight. The side buttons to the right of the mouse have been removed. This can be utilized, I guess, by a left-handed shape still because it is ambidextrous, but the downside is the buttons are on the left. So if you're a left-hand user, I'm sorry, but I guess you can say this is catered more to a right-hand style. You can still use it left-handed. It's just the buttons are on the other side. So that, I know that might be a little frustrating. One thing I also noticed the bottom, again, the DPI button is not there. This comes in only white and black. I picked the black version because I heard that it's slightly lighter than the white version. Now the features continue onwards as you have above 25K DPI, which is insane. You still have the power play compatibilities. That's where those little things that I was showing you before, the removal that at the bottom for weight, that power play is still intact. This was designed for aim enthusiasts, performance seekers, removing the flare and pushing control. It is what I always wanted the mouse and I'm proud to be honestly an owner of one. Now let's go more in depth and talk about the glide. We're gonna go from slowest on the mouse pad to fastest and be mindful this is subjective. Utilizing the raw PTFE mice feet that it comes with. Humidity of a room can impact glide and preference is really your preference. This is me doing my best to describe the sensation based on the feel without fancy numbers. I'm just not a fancy number guy. I'm just going to go based off of feel after utilizing this for hours and hours and hours. Now, slower can be described as swampy, grippy, or sharp. And as we go faster, this gets tricky because sometimes the texture can actually help build momentum and speed. Or if you have less texture, like a hard surface, then obviously you get more of a glide. Again, I'm going to name the mouse pad from slowest to fastest and do a quick description of the glide with the mouse. So let's start with the slowest, the GSR feels sharp, it grips, especially if the room is humid, you can really feel it. And it's you, you feel it more in the Teflon rather than the top heavy, which you would feel with the G Pro, or you'd feel both of them. So the super light has that benefit. Now, next in line is a GSR SE. It's still relatively slow. This one's tricky because it's faster when you first buy it. There is a coating on the mouse pad. After about three or four months, it kind of dissipates. The two I own are really, really old and slow. So, I'm keeping them in order that a worn GSR SE in my eyes is still slow. It's not as slow as the GSR, but still slow. The Logitech G640 is up next. This pa pad really starts to smooth things out, but the coating initially, again, provides a lot more speed and then slows down. I actually prefer when it's worn down and actually hits a nice sweet spot for the super light, personally. These I didn't prefer as much with the super light, which is the Myonix mouse pad. It feels similar to a QCK, but I just and missing any sort of grip. It's like, it's like an in-between point where there's no texture and there's no grip, and it makes it personally hard for me to aim. So next would be the QCK. Same thing, it kinda has a bit of a texture, but not really, especially with the super light. With the G Pro, you could kinda feel it more, kinda rolls a little bit with the super light, not so much. Now next in line is a Taconic Control. This provide, gets even faster and you can start to feel the texture. What's weird is that this says it's a control pad, but it's actually faster than its other mouse pad uh, comparison. Now the Cooler Master MP510 is really fast in this mouse. With a super light, I mean, you feel the texture, but there's a ton of control and you can really, really build momentum. Next in line that's even faster is the Artisan Hind Mid. The downside to this one is even with the G Pro, 
you could feel the difference in the X and Y glide, meaning the X and Y axis. If you're moving up and down, left and right, there is a difference in glide with the Hind specifically, which is why it's hard to recommend this mouse pad. I love it. I wore mine down significantly, but you can feel the texture more. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Just take it with a grain of salt. Now, my new favorite personal preference is the Artisan Extra Soft Otsu Hayate. I had the theory that this would be my new favorite because I was really preferring the Logitech G640 and the Artisan FX0 Extra Soft, and I wanted like an in-between point. And I want an in-between point with the Artisan Hine as well, and this one kind of hits that sweet spot altogether. Now, the Artisan FX0 Mid is very much like the Hayate, removing some of the texture. Kind of a sweet spot there. It's weird because I was using the extra soft before and this is more of a mid and it's kind of hard to describe, but nonetheless, you're getting a little bit faster, faster, faster. Now, as we get to the last three here, the Artisan FX uh, Soft and the Artisan FX Extra Soft are the fastest. There's just like a little jump in tier there. So I'm gonna blend these two together, but there's a little jump in tier. It's a soft, then Extra Soft provides the fastest, fastest speed in my opinion. Now, of course, if you use a hard surface, that's going to be faster than any of the pads I mentioned. But the downside with a hard surface is that it's going to wear down your mice feet way faster. And of course, with a hard surface is that certain sections of the surface start to wear down and change also in speed and consistency, which is quite frustrating, which is why I don't I no longer use hard surfaces. I did when I first started gaming, but I pretty much stopped doing that altogether. Now, what, what's interesting about the extra soft Artisan FX0 pad, the one that I mentioned prior, is that it on a lighter mouse it kind of feels like an air hockey table i mean it's not exactly like that but this is the best explanation i can give my preferred mouse pad currently again is the artisan extra soft otsu hayate with the super light when i want more grip i go to the logitech g640 when i want to feel more or less no surface i go with the artisan fx zero that's just like pure blitzing speed so this sunday i'm going to do a stream where i utilize this mouse in action it is my go-to mouse literally now. I don't really know if I'm ever going to have an alternative to this because this is this hit every single point or issue that I had with the G Pro. And I can't think of anything else that I would say I would trade with it. I wouldn't really go lighter. Going any lighter, I feel like I'm going to start struggling with my aim, going heavier, changing the shape. But I just, I just don't know what to change for it. The downside to this is also the price. This thing is really expensive, but... I mean, if you're looking for a performance and you're looking for that go-to for the G Pro, I mean, this is it. This is clearly designed for that performance and it just, it delivers. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, granted, again, Logitech did send it to me. So shout out to Logitech. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, as a huge fan of the G Pro, I can say now I'm a huge fan of the Superlight. So I got to get many, many more of these and this is going to be my go-to. But again, I appreciate all of you guys. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I really hope these detailed explanations help somebody out there really decide if this mouse is for you. And I talked about it on so many different mouse pads and really helped give the full picture of it. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of you and I'll see you guys next time.